What's going on everybody? Tobin here, 5M Family Homestead Channel. Today we're going to do a taxidermy video. Try not to burn my leg on my heater. It's cold out here in the shop. I'm trying to stay warm while I'm talking to y'all. Today we're going to do a taxidermy skull mount related video. Um, we're going to do a European mount on a, I believe it's a Catalina goat. Um, I've done all kinds of horned animals. Uh, the biggest like Eland and um, a, a really big longhorn all the way down to antelope and and just normal rams uh, like that ram you see on the wall back there that's hydro dipped uh, tons of rams like that this is my first goat so uh, we skinned it yesterday uh, Reed and I did we got a short video of us skinning it I'll show you that now um, skinning is not really um, not really that big of a deal so I didn't really want to get a whole lot of footage doing that so, I'll, I'll roll that video now. It's kind of hard to get this. So we got it skinned up. It smelled like a barnyard goat. Very domestic smelling. I'm not sure on the story of it. Doesn't matter to me, we're gonna make it into a skull mount either way. So the first thing <clears throat> with any horned animal is get the horns off. There's a lot of debate on the right way to do it. Some people bag them up, put them out in the sun, and they'll pop off. Uh, some people submerge them under water and they macerate them all at the same time and pop off. Um, on this goat, this is for a commercial customer of ours. And so we, you know, time is of the essence. We have to get this back to them in a, in a quick manner. So we're going to boil them off. So I'm going to put them in a pot. I've got a video on my channel from a year or two ago. It's a real short video that shows you how to do it. Um, I'll show it in this video also. But all we're going to do is put it in a pot of water that's big enough to get the entire horns under it. And we're going to get it at a, at a rolling boil for probably 20 minutes or so. And they'll just they'll pop right off. May have to use a hammer and smack them around with a hammer a little bit, but they'll pop right off. So we we'll do that first, and then we'll clean it and whiten it. So y'all come with us. Guys, like I said, I've never done a uh, goat before. I don't know. I'm hoping that the bone inside this horn doesn't go up any higher than about right here. I, don't, I wouldn't think it would. That's pretty far. But we'll find out. If it does, then we maybe have to go to plan B. But I, I would be really surprised if it goes that high. So I'm going to fill it up with water, no soap, it, almost to the top. Get it to a bowl, leave it there for 15-20 minutes, and then come back and check it. guys so this this goat's been here for a good hour hour and a half it took a long time to get the water to boil uh, it's kind of chilly this morning for Texas it was 30 something degrees so I don't know if it's ready or not there's really no way to know other than taking it out and trying but I'm thinking it should they should pop off now so I'm gonna pull them out Skyler I don't think she likes that hammer so we're going to pull it out take it out here in the driveway and we're going to see if we can get them off real quick. Touch the dangly thing like White Bone Creations does. 
The dingle dangle. Hey, what did he say? Dingle dangle? The dingle dangly. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of fun to play with. Yeah. All right. That's it. What's going on? Oh, she's trying to get out. Alright, I'm probably gonna cut them off. I just need enough enough of this bone to be able to get some bondo on. All the rest of this, there's no reason to boil it and keep it. So I'll probably cut it about right here. That gives me a good little spot to uh to glue it to. All right, guys, so we got the, you saw we got the horns cut off. The, the horns were moved and then the horn cores cut down. I, I had to use that big pot right there to have enough room to get the horns down in there. So I'm gonna empty that pot out and then get a smaller pot. I've got a few other deer I need to bull at the same time. So I'm gonna put that goat in with those deer and we're gonna bull them in that smaller pot until they're ready to hit with the power washer. That's my power washer set up, it's a Ryobi. 2,000 PSI, um, I power washed hundreds, maybe thousands of deer with that one. I had another one that kind of stopped working on me, but I got it working again, um, but that's what we use. So we're gonna use this little pot right here and we'll get that goat in there and those other deer and we'll get them bowling. I'm gonna put some ivory soap in there with them and get them going. Alrighty, so this is after power washing for about 10 minutes. So now what we're going to do is we're going to pop these ear buds out. They're a little bit different on, the, on this goat than they are on a whitetail. And then we're going to pull that nose out and then we're going to put it back in the pot for a little while. And let all this rest of this stuff loosen up a little bit. I help her here with me, rocking the 5M family homestead hat. It's my go-to hat now. So the other thing we gotta do is pull the brain out. I forgot to mention that. So Reed's gonna try that first. Y'all be prepared for this. This is the most satisfying, satisfying part of all of this. Ooh. Perfect. Like a professional. Like you've done it a hundred times because you have. All right, guys. We swap places real quick. Reed's. This is our first goat, so we don't really know. This is a little bit different, but this part right here is what we're trying to get at. Is that right there? That just holds a lot of meat, and they're not, you're not going to see that when they're on the wall. So we'll take that out. And then we're going to take this drill. I don't know what size drill what that is, but, and then we're going to drill. That's it. All right, Reed's gonna show y'all how we're gonna pull the, the nose out. Go on one side. Like Don't all come out at the same time.
After that comes out, you just clean it out a little. Then you go to the next side. All that stuff come out there. You go straight down the middle. That's it. Whatever else is in there, come out with the power washer for the most part. All right, we got it back in there. We're going to put some heat to it, let it simmer for a little bit, and then we're going to work on some of the other heads and then come back to it. So Reed has put on his waders from last year. He's about outgrown them. I'm going to hit it one more time, just clean it up a little bit. If there's a little bit of meat left on there, that's fine. When we whiten it, it'll come off, but he's just going to touch it up, and then we're going to get ready to whiten it. This is what we use. 20 volume liquid developer clear. Thank you, Reed, for helping us hold in. Three bottles of this straight. If you have to top in, in the pot that we're using, if you have to top it off, put a little bit of water in it, but we, we don't really dilute it unless we just add a little bit to it. So I already have some in a five gallon bucket. We're about to put the goat head in there and then we'll pour it in there. We're gonna bring it to a bowl, turn it off, let it sit, and it'll be done. So guys, I believe this is a 20 quart pot. Bought it at Walmart, but I don't know for sure. But just you can go if you want to get one, you could just eyeball it. Say I got two deer in that one. This five gallon bucket is full of peroxide. This peroxide's been I've cleaned probably at least 30 heads with it, and it's still good. It's getting old, but this will probably be its last time to be used. Guys, don't breathe that peroxide. We have respirators we use if we're around it a lot. I'm not wearing it now so I can talk, but uh, I don't know what breathing heated peroxide would do, but it can't be good for you. So um, just something to think about. So I'm gonna turn the heat on this, and well, like I said, we're gonna bring it to a boil, and then turn it off and probably leave it in there for about 20 or 30 minutes, and then pull it out, hit with the power washer again. All that extra, the, the little bit of meat that was left on there is gonna come off, and after that, we'll let it dry, and then it's time to put the horns on, and then we'll be done with it. All right, guys. The goat has been in the peroxide for, we brought it to a bowl. It's been there for a while. It, it's pretty white now. It's gonna get whiter as it dries. So we're gonna pull it out and knock all this little stuff off there with the power washer, and then we're gonna let it dry. This right here is key to getting that head whiter, is just having them out here in the sunshine. That sun will make them turn white and it will dry them really good. As you can tell, we've got several other up here drying as well. But it looks good. Horns over here drying. We'll let those dry up real good and then we'll get those mounted on there tomorrow. This goat has been drying for about two days now. It was out in the sun all day today. As you can tell, it's really, really white. There's no grease coming out on it anywhere. On the back side, there's some where the uh, the neck meets the brain. There's some yellow right here. I'm gonna show y'all how to fix it real quick. As you can tell, the horns are dry.
They look really good. Power washed the inside of them, got them all cleaned up. They look good. So this stuff on the back of the skull right here, a Dremel tool will help you with that. As you can tell, it's all gone. So, now it's time to attach the horns to back to the head. They slide on there perfectly fine, just like that. So, since everything is dried out real well, there's no moisture in there, I know it's safe to put the horns back on. I've tried different ways. I've tried Gorilla Glue and um, I've even tried super glue. I've tried just screwing them in, but I like Bondo. Um, I've had the best luck with it when I do prong horns, when I do rams, um, even long horns. Uh, I've just had better luck with the Bondo. It sets up super fast. I'll mix one little batch of it and do one horn because it dries so, it hardens so fast. And then I'll come back and mix, mix another batch and then put the other horn on there. All right, those horns are bondoed on there. That bondo is pretty much already set up. If you tried really hard to pull them off there, they'd probably come back off right now, but in about 20 minutes, they're not coming off. They're gonna be on there forever. It looks really sharp, the white contrast and the dark horns like that. I'm really happy with how it came, turned out, able to keep all the teeth in. Looks, looks really, really good. Really happy with it. So, we ordered plaques. Let me turn the camera around here. So we've got probably 40 heads in the shop right now. You can see behind us right there. All those heads, let me see if I can get a better shot. All those heads there. And then Got a bunch on the ground there. Got some javelina, some ho a hog, some other deer back over there. So we ordered plaques for all these heads. And they're supposed to come in. It's Today is Monday before Christmas. They're supposed to come in tomorrow or maybe Wednesday. That goat is going on a, on a plaque as well. So I'm going to end the video with mounting that on a plaque. I have another video on my channel on how I mount uh, deer on a plaque. I'm gonna show it one more time just for um, just to kind of wrap it up. Get on a plaque, and then that that goat actually goes to a processor that we work for. So we have a contract, kind of a con verbal contract with them, where we do all of their heads for them, and they upcharge to the customer, and that goes back to them. So that will go to them, and then their customer will come pick it up. So we will see y'all hopefully tomorrow with a plaque. Get it mounted on there and we'll be done. All right guys, last step of completing the Euro mount or skull mount on this Catalina goat. Um, I got my beautiful camera lady behind the camera for me today. I think this is the first time she's actually helped me. I've done the rest of it pretty much by myself, but she was out here. We're actually, you know, look on the floor, we've got a few other, a uh, few. few other heads to mount. A few is three. Yeah. We've got like 20 that yeah, we have well, to mount. Well, there's actually about 40 heads out here. I think yeah. about half of them need plaques. So we got them situated in different categories. So, But the Bondo has 100% dried. These horns are on there for good. They're not going anywhere. Sometimes I'll put um, mopping glow on the horns. Um, I do it on antelope. I really like how it looks on antelope. It kind of makes the black pop. Um, but I don't think this one mm -mm. needs it. It has, the horns are real pretty on their own. So 
All we have to do now is get it mounted on this plaque. This is a mesquite plaque. We order all our plaques. This one's got a really cool little. Yeah, that's what I was going to show them. Oh, you want to? Yeah, the show knot them. On it. And then. I'll put a link in the description. Yeah, because it's not wanting to focus. It's shiny, so. Yeah. It's the taxidermist wood shop in Wichita Falls, Texas. Yeah. It, it, I, I'll try to put a link in the description. I may forget, so if I do, remind me. I'll put one in there. But <laughs> we order all our plaques from them. This mesquite wood is really pretty. Um, this one like had that big knot, has that big knot there, which is really cool. All right, I've shown this process on a few other videos, but I'm going to show it on this one again anyway. I draw a line right here. This right here is the best place to mount a head to a plaque on a any kind of a horned or antlered animal. Then I'm going to take my drill and I'm going to drill a hole right in the middle. And it's got a little crease there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop, disregard that line <laughs> and make a line right here. Because the crease there's a, there's a little There's a little like ridge right there and my drill bit wants to fall off of it. So I'm going to okay. drop down. I just need to sit right directly in the middle. That line is so that when I put it on this plaque, yeah. I don't worry about side to side. I'm worried about up and down right now. So I, I want to get it where I like it up and down. I like it right there. And then I'm going to drop down here. I'm going to find the line that I drew, which is right there. I'm going to drop my pencil down and I'm going to make a line directly underneath it. Like that. Didn't you come up with that on your own? And nobody taught me how to do this. <laughs> this is. This is the Mathis Top 10 Taxidermy Method. It works. It works. So, like I said, I wasn't worried about side to side. I was just more worried about up and down where I wanted the skull. So this line marks up and down. And then I'm going to find the center of the plaque, which I think is about right there. And I'm going to drill me a hole. <laughs> I don't know why. Yeah, I'm just giggling at you. So you're like making cute little statements. So right there I'm gonna go through the board about three quarters of the way about right there just enough there'll be enough sticking out that that a tip the tip will go into that hole a little bit more all right so the tip of the screw is in the hole Now, what I'm going to do is flip it over and look. See, it's very off-centered. So I'm going to take, it's not tight, it's loose. So I'm going to just pick up on the skull, not here, because you'll break the nose off, but right here, in front of the teeth, and I'm going to get it centered. So now it's centered. I'm going to flip it back over very carefully, and then just tighten that screw up. That's it. Hmm. It's mounted on there. Does it look centered? I think so. Looks centered to me. Yeah. It's always hard with the longer horn animals because <laughs> you want to make sure you focus on the right part. His horns go, you can't really tell, yeah. but like his horns, there's not much clearance there. Yeah. That looks nice. Guys. Thank you all very much for watching this video. Uh, I made a home, one of our, a video that was more about our homesteading and what's going on around the, around the house. And I showed the shop and showed this goat in there. And there's so, several people that said they wanted to see us do it. Uh, so that's what made me decide to do it. So hope you all enjoy it. If you haven't already, please subscribe. We've got a lot of plans coming up this spring. Lots of videos we're going to bring y'all. Lots of stuff going on. So uh, please hit that subscri subscribe button. Stick around and we'll see y'all again.